Great relationships don't just happen, they're designed. But how do you get the love you really want when you haven't had the models and examples you needed? We've learned the hard way that talking about stuff can change everything, but it doesn't come naturally, and that's normal. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the ups and downs of creating a custom-built love. We'll get personal and talk about what's worked for us, hear from Jolie about what the research can teach us about love, and answer listener questions. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. Hello again, or for the first time, if you're just joining us. We're going to talk about wounds and apologies in relationships. Yay. Yay, right? Fun stuff. Um, I promise it actually can be fun. It absolutely absolutely can. can. Um, We're going to talk about how to make an apology, how to how to like reconnect after a disruption in in connection and uh we're going to talk about some of what we do and what works yeah and wounds the reason i said oh sounds like fun is well it can be fun from 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 my perspective dealing with my wounds has kind of become a sort of fun the same sort of fun that working out really hard is Mm -hmm. um oh that's my stuff okay now i'm i I don't want to sit, I don't want to stew in my woundedness at all, but working that stuff. Well, yeah. And and, and working on how to have ways to engage and re-engage with you. Yes. It feels a lot like really hard workouts. Like, oh, this is stressful during, a little anxiety producing before, and afterwards. You can leave some soreness afterwards, but also. Damn, it's so good. uh, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, and I find that. Um, learning new ways of coming back from from disconnection. The more ways I have, the more the more ways I understand how to do it, the better I feel about our relationship. And we're just constantly learning this. I I think just in the last couple oh, of weeks, yeah. I remember I a couple of times when one or the other of us was dealing with um, having our our stuff opened up or feeling beat up or just like just feel like really having our um having our feelings hurt or whatever hurts coming up and the thing that stood out to me is oh look at us there were little choices to not engage in the exact same old pattern yeah right and yeah. and i i say the last couple of weeks i mean i wrote this on the schedule and thought hey let's let's record this and i think even that I, I would say my first thing is mindfulness and knowing that we all have patterns yes. around our our wounds and our and our woundedness, yeah. our our big ouch spots, our sore spots. Yeah. We have patterns and those patterns tend to keep us sort of locked yep. in. It, Rather it, than healing, they it tends to keep us locked in the wound. I started to get aware of the times that felt like they were they were chess moves like whole chess plays and and i started to notice that okay if i do this you're gonna do that yep and then i'll do this and then you'll do that and then we'll be mad at each other for you know six hours i know exactly what's gonna happen because it happens every time like okay i bet everybody has a story like this how does thanksgiving go at your like at your family's place like like Years, years oh, upon years yeah. will go the exact mm-hmm. same way. Like, oh, Aunt Edna will bring this and she'll say this thing. Yeah. And then my uh, my other aunt will be set off and then there'll be something and then there'll be silence. But then somebody else will have stepped in and done this. And then there'll be a big blowout and then there'll be some tears and some forgiveness. And now, and that's it. Like, that's then how pie. it goes. And it goes that way, right? Every time. Yeah. Like, the details become unique, but you take even just one step out of it, you're like, oh, that is a pattern. Yep. Humans are incredibly predictable in in that way and how we act out our stories and wounds and how we reject the the notion that it only takes one person to start shifting those yeah. patterns. And, I, and my enough- experience has been that it really, one person can shift them. And well, sometimes that, that shift is 
you know, leaving the scenario. But more often than not, it's from right inside it. Because another way to say that is the pattern requires everybody's participation. Oh, it's a choreographed dance. Right. And if anybody doesn't participate, the pattern can't happen. Something else will happen. Um, And you don't necessarily know what it is, but you won't have that pattern. Right. Because you did something different. We know this at home, too, because we have a set of kids who live here with us. Five of them live here with us full time. And they... um, they dance in a certain way. We they know do. what sorts yeah. of things they're going to do to get each other going yeah. and, to, you know, and we hurt each other in familiar ways yeah. all the time. Yeah. So that, that chess sequence that you were just talking about, like, yeah. The Fibonacci sequence. It looks so, <laughs> it looks so complex right. at surface level. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, how could you possibly? But in fact, we're just acting out the same yeah. old Poke poke poke, 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 poke. Yeah. And emotionally, I can, it it has felt inevitable sometimes. Like, yeah. this is my only choice. This is the only thing. It's not. Of course it isn't. I'm a human being. I have choices. That, that freedom of choice mm-hmm. is, I think my, that's totally my biggest find. The, the fact that I always have a choice to try a new action, not, not to fix it, not to fix the thing or to figure it out, but to try doing something new. Yeah. Um, the other night, you and I were in a, we were in a, 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 a no win situation. Yep. We were struggling. Um, something wasn't working in the bedroom. It just, it like we were just not meeting each other the way we typically do, and it kind of brought me to tears. Like I didn't even know how I was feeling. I was just like I felt rejected, whatever. And at some point, maybe a half an hour into the the dynamic that was going on, I remember feeling like. Oh, I have found a new way to act out my old story of rejection. Oh, a new okay. way to act. So, so yeah. you weren't rejecting me. Nothing was going on, but I, I like I, I made it happen. Mm-hmm. I very creatively. So it didn't. You hadn't done any rejecting, but I got to play out my side of my poor me. I'm rejected. I'm not wanted. Yeah. And I won't get what I want even if I ask. Ah. <laughs> so we have pat we so so we have our own internal patterns of and that's why i was think the word wound came up because i'm like this is a core wound mm-hmm. for me where i play out this 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 core wound plays out as a story of um i'm not good i'm not good enough and i'm not um not good enough to be able to get what i want Mm. or maybe just boil it down to i'm not going to get what i want no matter how i ask for it and i want to it's like i want to play that out um more than i want to be happy i want to be right more than i want to be happy i want to be and i don't actually need to know why that's that's what let me change it Mm. i couldn't change it in that moment we we had to agree to just like go to sleep just agree to like okay this is not working we talked for a while we both got really tired neither one of us got what we and wanted but there was nothing to do yeah but something you did different was you let me be sad about it okay without trying like we didn't try to get to resolution yeah you were letting me be sad about it cuz i was sad i i just was yeah i was just sad and from even a couple days out, I'm like, oh, yeah, because I'm playing out a story that clearly gets me something. Yeah. I'm not even sure what, because um, this is an ever unfolding process of learning about myself. I don't know if this is what you were thinking of when you when you put this in, but put this episode topic out there. But my apologies when uh, what i've learned over the years is that one of the principal purposes of me apologizing is that i i'm trying to show to you that i'm on the same page with you that even if i've hurt you like, that you want to get you want to like that i'm i'm come back into relation that i want to come back into relation and that i will um and then I will observe you. I will see you. I will, I will watch whatever the, whatever I've inflicted on you. Whatever maybe I've I've hit one of your wounds, or maybe I've just done something boneheaded on my own, or acted out, or one acted of your out own one of my own stories that um, leaves that, down the road. 
that I will see what it did to you and yeah. I won't look away. Okay. And so this is how we're very, very different um, in our upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had very different baselines. Um, I was supposed to apologize for everything, basically for breathing, um, which is funny because it, uh, funny because I didn't really realize it, but yeah, I was supposed to apologize for everything. It took years to realize that that was built in, mm -hmm. but you really didn't understand an apology as, as a reasonable action. Like you, you apologized, but it was a surface level. Yeah. Apology. I didn't really understand what it was for. Yeah. What its per root purpose actually was. So we had to get together on this because I was apologizing for things that had nothing to do with me. And yep. then as you were starting to learn how to respond to me, you started apologizing for things that had nothing I to did. do with you. Yep. And then we were just caught. Still wasn't in a, figuring out what it we was But we were just for. caught in a cycle yeah. of, of consistently um, trying to apologize our way out of fights yep. when in fact... A lot of the the tension. So I say fight. Like in that in that moment, it feels like a fight. But from a couple days out, I think of of many of our arguments, I think, oh, it wasn't really a fight. It was a misunderstanding, a misalignment, a misattunement, and patience in that moment without trying to, um, with only owning the part that is actually mine to own, without yeah. trying to apologize my way into you feeling different yeah has given us some yeah. space to do more individual yes processing and work um early on I, f I i felt a need to apologize to you that was born of my own stuff but also born of just wanting you to like me like i was trying totally. to I get force that. you to yep. like me by apologizing for anything that ever went wrong and it didn't get us it didn't get us where we wanted to go no it didn't because what it got me was feeling shameful and and very what Terry Real would call one down, very despondent yep. about yep. like not being good enough for you. So that just fed my not good enough story, right. which is funny because I also have a wonderful way too much story. I'm also way too much. I'm both. There are two not sides to and... your coin. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the apology, um, and I wonder whether people might have been thinking that we are going to say, here's a specific way you have to apologize. Uh, to me, it's not that. The first thing is just owning the fact that an apology given specifically to stop a fight probably isn't going to do yeah. the thing. Yep. Um, because it, it misses the deeper levels of understanding each other that really get the work done. Um, so an apology that comes before you've even wrapped your head around what's happening it might not work. That doesn't mean you can't say you're sorry because, <laughs> you know, I, I've noticed there's a difference between an expression of regret and an apology. They're two different things. Say more about that. Well, um, and honestly, this is a thought that was just came up since we were thinking about it now in this episode. But um, I, OK, an, an important element to an apology is to say, I'm sorry. That's a statement about me. I am sorry. To me, that is I regret what's. It, a, maybe I regret my actions. Maybe I regret the the outcome, the way it fit in, whatever. I regret how things have gone that led us here. It's an expression of regret. And if I stop there, I'm not done. That's that's nothing. That is just a statement to you about me, which at worst is a, a demand for you to do something about it. And at best is, uh, for me anyway, it's like just a little bid to distract you from what you're feeling. Well, it does recenter things on you. And right. we, we ran into this a lot at the beginning because you're you would apologize, but it was just that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and it was it was it it was really designed and this took a while and a really great analyst to say, Oh, so it's all about you. <laughs> yep. It's all about how you feel. Yeah. yeah. Um Thayer was able to see right through you and say, Ah uh, yeah. yeah, but isn't she the one? in pain right? and isn't she the one that happened yeah. or and it was just wasn't just me this could have been about anybody you were mm -hmm. interacting with but isn't was... the other person having an experience do you know what's going on there yeah all right uh -oh. and that that was oh uh, no wait oh oh shoot right <laughs> it's never right. too late to begin your emotional 
education Clearly. around that too, right? It's never too late <laughs> no, it to isn't. deepen yeah, there's, this capacity. There's so much Because this was late, late, late in the game. So I think people forget that we can just keep learning about, mm -hmm. about this, um, but don't give up hope. Because Absolutely. if I had written you off because you didn't understand this before you had a chance to really dig yeah. in and, and feel your way through it again, and well, I would have missed out on a lot of great stuff. Something that comes up for me around the next step. So you say you're sorry. The next step of an apology is to, ex you know, <laughs> explain and, you know, share, reflect back yeah. that you know what happened. Like, here's, here's what I'm sorry for. Here's here's how yeah. I've harmed you. And I have a bunch of things to say about that, but you can finish your thought. Well, I was just going to say, this is where it's easy to craft the story to paint over the part that's most ugly to me. Like, so I'm I'm gonna I'm sorry. Yeah. I see that I and I fill in X, Y, and Z, but I All leave out Q to hide because Q. Q. I don't want to <laughs> talk about that, right? Um, yep. The the truth telling. The, the acknowledgement of the harms and the uh, and the the way that that reflects um, responsibility taking responsibility for my actions yeah. that to me like that's everything that is Agreed. that's what I didn't get as a child that's what mm -hmm. I didn't get in my first marriage that's what I didn't get in most of my friendships that acknowledgement that and here's here's where I see what I've done wrong and here's what I'm going to do to address it. Mm -hmm. That, those two things, like that up-levels all of it. Yeah. And for some people, this might be a, a skill they started practicing really early on. But if it's not, I, I really do. I think that there's a lot of hope. Both of us came yeah. to doing this well yep. very late. Very late. And yet, and here we are working I, on it. I found it. Doing so, well. Yeah, I think so. Um, my experience of you is that that goes really well. Um, my experience with me is that it was really hard to learn hard in the sense of, I found it really hard to have to say out loud what exactly it was that was hurting in you because of something I had done. I found it so hard to own it and take responsibility for it. It hurt. It was gross. And it was the thing that, that Thayer pointed out, our analyst pointed out saying this is all about you it's like yes it is about me because it hurts so much that i hurt you that's not the and point and so what would that happen may, then was you would you would re you'd recenter yourself yep. and you would tell me how much you were hurting <laughs> yeah and this took yeah an, uh, this was a couple of years of intense for work for yep. us um because i would say yeah yes but now we're back in your work and this still yeah. comes up now we're back in <laughs> yep you yeah. and how you're feeling but the hurt thing is still over there behind my you know like it's over there and yep. it was um it was really challenging to me to name that and say i hear your apology and it's not enough yep. without you staying centered on the actual the actual impact of what has happened and and that was so hard for me to hear it was very uncomfortable because I had, as part of my identity, that I was a good guy. Uh-oh. And I didn't hurt people. TM. Oh, no. Not good. Not good at all. And so... So when a you good guy. And, like, let's explain that just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, okay. The... I remember having to work this out with you because mm. we were in a, we were in the car and really arguing. Because you were just, like, absolutely, vehemently against the idea that you were wrong about <laughs> something that was so, like... You you had harmed you. you this was yeah. not okay. Yeah. You would hurt someone's feelings. It was a big deal, and I said, you know, just because you were wrong here and you really hurt that person doesn't mean you're not a good human. But you're definitely not a good guy in this story. You're not yeah. the good guy. Yep. You're you're not like you did the wrong thing, and I remember it was like hearing glass shatter. Totally. And you were like, yeah. Oh, I can be good like essentially worth mm -hmm. something but also be the bad guy in this story yeah i may be oh no oh no the world is complicated yeah but in that moment you let go of something really really important which is the idea that because i'm a good guy my actions are good 
which was so damaging. That was such a dangerous uh, weapon to walk around with because it, it would let me justify anything I did. I'm a good guy. Therefore, so, anything I do is good, which means if you're hurt, something's wrong with you. Well, I, you just like, must misunderstood. Uh, you, yep, must be a yep. misunderstanding and, or, or uh, this was a mistake, it makes but me, it's still not bad. It's very cringe. <laughs> Think that's I'm, what the kids would say. I'm actually cringing right now yeah. because I've been that. Well, I, I did that. I appreciate you owning it out loud because this is this was hard for me to accept about you because I had put you on such a pedestal. And because that you seemed so proper me as well. and yep. so um, you handled yourself really well in a lot of situations. So as I as that pedestal crumbled, yep. And I saw your proverbial clay feet, and I, oh no, he is just like my father. Dang it! Why is every guy I involve myself with just like my father? But here's the thing. In some ways. Yeah. In some ways. And and the the and this was important for me. I am attracted to a certain aloofness that tends to go along with this idea that I'm above reproach. Yeah. Uh oh. Right. Yeah. That one up grandiosity that right? And that makes sense, because I'm often groveling a little bit and a little bit down below and holding myself in a shame spot so we had to really negotiate this yep. so at first it looked like talking about apologies in a really rudimentary sense we were also raising a bunch of children so we would talk about a three-step apology you yep. know say you're sorry Say, name the thing that just happened, take responsibility for it, and now say Say how you're going to do what, you know, or ask them, what would you like me to do, depending on the situation, you know, say a child had broken a toy, um, there are multiple ways to resolve that. Would you like help fixing it? Would you like me to um, save my allowance to buy a new one? Um, There's all kinds of creative solutions yeah. beyond that. I mean, my goodness, the number of toys we had that were basically Frankenstein toys put oh, no. together out of other toys, <laughs> yeah. things like that. So it wasn't a one size fits all. Here's how it goes. It was getting from I'm sorry to here's what I I recognize my responsibility. Here's yeah. what happened. Um, I'm willing to look right at it, willing to look at myself in the mirror. And then here's how I want to... Um, Get on the same page with you and so yeah. so that your needs are met, which does not mean that the person has to be willing to forgive you. That's right. Yep. I hear a lot about the four-step apology, and the four-step apology has at the end there, ask for forgiveness. And I say, fuck that. I have no interest. If someone asks me for forgiveness, honestly, I, I, no. That is, it, that's just not helpful to me. It rushes the timeline for me and it implies that forgiveness is, um, is something I have to give you. Like I, I don't, it, I find it upsetting that we would just automatically, especially when we're teaching children, just like teach them to, to ask that because it's, it, it's yeah. by nature going to be rushed. If you say, I'm sorry, here's what I did. Here's how I'll make it better. The person may not have even processed yeah, what's happened. Yep. I mean, it's very likely that they haven't gotten there yet. So it's again if it's recentering the person big. who did the harm. Yeah. No. And I, it is to- totally. Yeah, I hadn't actually thought about how it recenters the person who did the harm, but it definitely brings up for me the idea that okay, forgive. You mean go back to the way things were? Because if we do that, like okay, so now our relationship is restored. It can't be restored. It has to go forward. If you restore it, you skip anything that you could get out of the experience, you know, any growth that could happen. You want to move forward, which is not forgetting, not not pretending it never happened, well, so but he- knowing that this is a true thing about both of you, that this happened. Okay, yeah. So I this is a really important um, piece of the, the forgiveness puzzle mm-hmm. is that... I, every one of us is going to operate on our own time frame, you know, in our own, in our own context, in our own time frame. And forgiveness is, it's, in our culture, at least, it's tied together with forgetting or, yeah. or yeah, a restoration to some untouched state. Yeah. And that doesn't allow for the very real grief work. 
right. that is often tied to harms yep. that happen, right? So there is a there's a very real need to allow the other person to grieve. And we could talk about something very simple. Um, someone I was partnered with once broke something very important to me. It mattered a lot. Most things I, I can hold pretty lightly, but this was a very, very um, important piece of my history came out of my grandmother's house and it mattered to me and she broke it she broke it at a time when we'd been fighting a lot um and then she just handed this shards to me it was glass and she just handed them to me and was like i'm sorry will you forgive me it was it, it didn't there was no way for me to process it fast enough it was like it was like i fell off a cliff and it was just a thing i know and i know that I, from, from here, many, many years later, I'm like, yep, it was a thing and I can let go of it. But for me, it was like falling off a cliff. And then the ask for forgiveness was like getting shot on the way down. Like, oh, yeah. okay. It was going to be a rough fall anyways, but that did make it worse. It turns out. Um, so this is why I, I think time allowing for time yeah. without abandoning, like not without Doing the thing that you have done where you've just disappear, disappear withdraw. because your shame, yeah. you in your shame, you have withdrawn. So a patient, I'm here and I'm ready to talk about this um, when you're ready to yeah. has gone a long way for me to be able to process the whatever grief it is around around whatever hurt has happened, you know. And then get to a spot where actually some real forgiveness has happened. Some, some real reconnection and, yeah. And we have a particular part of our story that means that there's a lot, there's a an ongoing um, apology that happens in our household. Um, and that has to do with way back at the beginning of our relationship. Oh, yeah. There was a, a yeah. lot of... Um, asymmetry and real mistreatment especially financial mistreatment yes um and that still comes up more than a decade later it comes up and when it comes up sometimes i have big feelings and it and and you can sort of see i i can see it in myself i can yep. feel it in my body and you can see it in me where i'm like oh, i can't believe and i'll and i'll yep. reiterate some part of that story and I'm not trying to hurt you in that moment, but I still have not fully processed all of the, the grief and feelings around it. Maybe I never will. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. But you have learned to do something that is so precious to me, which is to simply say, "I am very sorry that that happened. That I was the person who did that. I'm here. You don't ask me to forgive you again and then recenter it. You just say, and I'm here, and I'm sorry that that happened, and." I'm sorry that I was, and, and you take responsibility without, without groveling either, because I don't want you to, because that gives me the opportunity to look at you and say, I know, I know that the person you are today would not do that. Thank you for witnessing the yeah, pain the way uh, it is and seeing that I'm no longer that person who would allow that to happen right, either. We've yeah. both grown and oops, there was the ouch again. Yeah. And it's making tears come to my eyes just thinking about it because it, because I feel your courageousness in in just in understanding. I remember five or six years ago you saying, "Oh, this one, this apology is going to stick around forever." Yeah, it's just it's just part of life now because we can't undo it. Yeah, well, and the part of the apology that's a statement of regret, I'm not going to stop regretting that I did that yeah. to you. You know, so that's that's perpetual. And it comes up less frequently because the, you know, the thing is, uh, the trajectory of life, it's, it now is a smaller percentage a of my life yeah. and it's further away from where I am. So it's not like this is an everyday thing even, it, but when it comes up, just breathing with me through yeah. it for, I mean, these things can be 15 or 30 seconds, right not huge deals yeah. and not taking it personally that it's coming up again because it's coming up for me and yeah. I'm not asking you to fix it. I'm just, there I am with my feelings. Okay. And that lets me move on and move out of it faster and, and recenter myself. Like, right. And that happened. And I've gained a sense of personal autonomy since then. And I've gained a, a real, a practical sense of like, how would I protect myself so that that would not happen again? Mm -hmm. 
how do I protect my children? So that would never happen right. to them. Like, yeah. And pr by protect, I mean teach them. Teach them. Mm -hmm. How to stand up for themselves so that that wouldn't happen to them. Um, and then I'm, I'm not just okay. I'm better than I was before we started that. Before that wound right. opened up. Yep. Before that wound got, got splayed open. Um, so while the wounds do sort of, they knit back together, but... You know, it's a fragile, it's a fragile yeah. thing at first and it becomes more stable over time. Yeah. But I find that a lot of wounds can just, they can reopen in certain yep. contexts. And Yeah, context. To, and, and so many things can trigger them. Time of year, food that's on the table, like all these, these emotional yep. associations can, can trigger stuff. And being able to know that that happens without feeling like I'm either threatened or you know in jeopardy of losing my relationship to you because these are the things that, that there we go scared me yeah well so at, in the beginning <laughs> when we were first untangling apologizing i remember you saying that essentially you were afraid that if you apologized i would leave you right because if i've would, shown a bright light on what i had done to you why would, would you stay <laughs> so instead you just try to like yeah hold it together by sheer force of will just yep. like well, if we just don't look at that thing, then yeah. we'll stay together. That that's not work. the marriage I want. That's not okay for us. It's really not. Yeah. But that's a very familiar marriage. Oh, we don't have a don't ask, don't tell policy in anything. Yeah, that's not That's not, not us. a thing we that's do. That's not us. And that's so exactly what that is. don't ask, don't tell works for some people. Yeah. But, um, no, we have a let's get it out on the table because yes. I want to grow from this thing. And that means that um, I'm going to be uncomfortable sometimes. Right. So I do, I really appreciate your willingness well, to stay with this um, process. And I don't want in any way to make this seem like you're the only person who does things wrong here. Because holy crap, <laughs> so do I. And, and yet the examples that I have of how it has stood out over the course of time in our relationship... Mm -hmm serve me very well to ground into a good example of what it is to not know how to apologize to learn how and then to practice practice it. yeah and i appreciate you being a constant example of what that is being my apology yoda <laughs> i appreciate that a lot glad to help okay well, hopefully we'll talk about something more fun. Yes. In the next episode, but All right. i think this was good. And yeah, until, I i'm very happy with it. Until then, keep talking to each other. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode. I've got one more thing I'd like to share with you, and that you're just going to need to hop over to the website listentojolie.com. There you can grab my top five relationship guides for free right now. Go get those guides. They're great. They're easy to implement conversations that will help you take action in creating the love you really want. It's my mission to make absolutely everything talk aboutable. She managed to help me be able to talk about stuff that I once couldn't even imagine saying out loud. Now I speak openly with my, my lovers, my friends, my family, and you um, on a podcast. Out loud relationship work really can change everything. That really is a wonder. One of my favorite things in the whole world. So when you're feeling the rough edges, when things aren't going the way that you'd hoped in your relationships, I want you to remember that relationships can be messy, and that's good news.